you're starting off, um, definitely you, you have a certain idea of what you want to achieve in a, out there in Sanskrit. If you do the research, that can help you unleash a lot of powers too. And I highly recommend going the Sanskrit route because of the, the, the vibrations that language creates while you speak it out loud. And there's a, there's a, there's a lot of energy around that too when you, when you do a bead meditation with the mala. I don't have mine down here right now because I don't think we're going to have time to go through 108 chants today. Um, but you can do, usually you want to do one bead uh, for each mantra and then switch over with, there's a, there's a whole um, process with your hands on which fingers to use and which not to use. Um, so we can, we'll probably dive into one of those a little bit later. Um, but today we're just going to keep it simple and yeah, do the OM mantra, which is the sound of the universe, which is coming at 432 hertz. And just to give you some context, uh, the, the music that we produce as humans usually comes out at 440 hertz. So what we're taking in isn't, is actually a higher sound than the, uh, than the universe, but even more so like to, to get on the same page with the universe, it's good to sometimes harmonize with the universe at 432 hertz. And Ohm gives that, um, that sound. And Ohm, the, the, the term Ohm is, uh, is, I mean, it's the universal sound. And what it essentially means is the sound of the universe. So you can think of a huge fan going off and it sort of has this hum or a drone to it. Uh, it's very, very similar how the universe is too. There's a, there's a hum, there's a, there's a drone to it. And that's the, the word or the, the sound Ohm. And um, today we're gonna we're gonna jump into that uh, own meditation. Um, I also, but before I wanted to go into that, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, this uh, uh, alternate nostril breathing, which is called nadi nadi um, sodana, or like uh, what else is it called? I have it written down. Um, anu anu vilama. Um, and but I, I know it as alternate nostril breathing, right? Um, it's really easy to do. It helps in uh, finding focus. It helps in um, uh, deep, re deep relaxation. If you have trouble sleeping at night, if you have insomnia problems, it helps uh, going to sleep. Usually I just do this for like five to ten minutes, um, and then I move on to another meditation or go, go on with my day. Um, so what you need to do is take your dominant thumb, your dominant uh, hand thumb, and place it on your right nostril, and then you want to then you want to breathe in through your. So you want to make sure you're alternately breathing in and out of each nose. So once you breathe out, you want to breathe back into this nose. Hold it for a second and release. And breathe back in through this nose. Hold it. Release. Through the right nostril. So just do that a couple times and get yourself uh, in a good rhythm. And uh, that way it's hard for me to talk and breathe in at the same time. So I'm going to try to, try to pace yourself at your own breath. Nira, can you bring the camera closer to, to your face or maybe to the side view and start yeah. again from the right side in case the your first instruction get got cut off? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you see me properly? Yeah, yeah. So breathe in through your left. Close your, nose, your left nostril. Hold. Open your right nostril and breathe out through it. Then breathe again in through your right nostril. Hold it. Then release your right finger and left nostril. And then breathe back in through your left nostril. Okay. 
Do this three or four more times. Let's take two more breaths. people complain about, hey, I can only breathe through one nostril, or I'm having trouble breathing, it actually helps with that a lot, too. Um, really gets your, your whole body invigorated. Uh, there is a scientific reason you use your ring finger and your thumb. I think it's due to uh, pressure points or the way you, the pulse, the pulse um, works or something like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a method. I just, I mean, it's escaping my mind completely why. Uh, but now, if we may, I think we can get into a um, the mantra meditation, right? So it's going to be really simple. Uh, we're going to think of the universe as our mantra, Om. Um, and or if you have something that you want to focus on, like that's very uh, that like that opens up, like if you want to focus on like, being more loving, being more kind, something like a, a normal typical mantra, please go ahead on. But uh, today I wanted to like. Uh, Julie and I are gonna are gonna focus on the Om and uh, try to, like I said, harmonize with the universe and just be one and get on the same page as the universe so we can um, make the most of it, right? How about that? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna actually play the Tom Four Two in the background, keep the energy going, but definitely keep your your uh, hands connected in your in your uh, seated position um, and. Keep your hands on your side or wherever they're comfortable. Lower your shoulders. Keep keep your keep your chin in a comfortable position. Make sure to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And recite Om at your own um, at your own breath or at your own rhythm. It's important to keep the rhythm and stay stick with it. Uh, and let's see how you guys all feel after you do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this music. Uh, I'll switch bit. my camera view to the pond here at the Can you hear that? Yeah, it sounds awesome. That sounds pretty dope.
think we will pause there or stop there. And I just noticed how beautiful the scenery you have, Julie. Oh, thanks, Nira. This is a park that we're staying very close to, and there are there are people doing tai chi, people jogging, people feeding the pigeons, and doing all sorts of chill things. Cool. So, yeah, I how did how did you feel about that uh, session? Um, it was. So one thing that I remember, I just want to touch upon with that, talked about in the first workshop in our first meditation, Monday meditation, Tuesday for you, but um, it was uh, the, the breath, the out, the exhale of the breath. And when, you, when you're when you doing the OM mantra, it's really cool because the longer you say OM, the more concentrated your exhale, right? And the longer your exhale, the better, because usually we we try to, we, if we are, we sigh a relief or if you, Exhale is usually like abrupt or long, and or it may be long, but it's really it's like you know, like when you yawn, you when you go, when you're at the end of the day or something, when something's frustrating you, or you know, you just sigh. It's just a very exerted breath. But when you're able to tone it down and exhale in a concentrated manner as long as possible, and saying OM helps with that. You can notice how cool your breath becomes, how um, how more calming of effect it is and all those cool things but yeah Julie, how, how was your how was I mean I don't know if the tempura like over droned my ohms or if you were chanting along as well actually your I could hear your ohms really clearly and you have some bass in your voice it was really cool to hear it along with the tempura I thought it was a recording I thought it was part of the tempura recording and then I realized it was you, so that was really cool. And as you were yeah. saying the ohms out loud, I was saying the ohms in my mind. So just so if anyone's watching the replay later on, you can do either or and still feel the benefit. Because so I was saying the ohm in my mind, I felt the vibration start from my brain and through my esophagus and through the rest of my body. And... At any point where my mind started to wander to the past or the future, the next time I would say OM, it would just bring the focus right back to right now. So good, yeah, yeah. That's the power. That's the power of the mantra. You know, like it it helps you keep your mind. Um, it keeps your mind on track, right? Whereas if sometimes just people sit there in like pure silence, it's really really tough to, to keep your mind on um, silent thoughts so ohm is the universal sound so why not uh yeah start with that to the good starting point for mantras but my, if um if i may my my favorite mantra is actually uh this other one called uh it's uh loka samasta suki no Bhavantu. and what that translates to is May all the beings in all the world find happiness and peace, right? And it's not just me, it's about the world, the universe, not just humans, but all the beings that we may or may not know about. And having that type of energy, if you're giving off that energy, you're also getting and taking it in, too. So it could be really powerful. Um, my third favorite mantra, or I don't, even, I don't even know if I have a favorite, it's just I like to interchange these things based on where I am or what I want to accomplish in a given week or a day, right? Um, as you may know, in, in Hindu religion or in tradition, um, Ganesh is a really powerful uh, uh, god. Um, he, he's really tied in with a lot of yoga practices, as well as meditation, obviously prayer and um, temples around India. Um, one of the mantras that I like to say is, Om Gan Ganapataye Namaha. And I'll, I'll write these all out in the in the group, um, the actual name and their meanings. But Om Gan Ganapataye Namaha loosely translates to um, Lord Ganesh, uh, may you empower me with with strength to uh, overcome my obstacles. Right? I think uh, there's another translation I have here. It, um, yeah, it is. I bow to the elephant face deity Ganesh. Obviously, um, who is capable of removing all obstacles? I pray for blessings and protection. So, um, just knowing knowing some of these mantras, doing the research, and 
saying them out loud is so powerful. Like when you're given an obstacle in life, it could be a personal, professional, um, maybe maybe a interpersonal type of problem that you want to deal with. Um, you can chant these mantras, and then you may find that answer uh, within that day, uh, or maybe in, within that week. Um, if it is important to use the 108, uh, the, uh, or sequence the mantra 108 times um, to, to feel the true power, and I forgot actually to start my mantras with Om Shanti and end them with Om Shanti, so that's one thing I wanted to, I should have ended my mantra with um, Om, 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 Om Shanti, 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 and um, that's usually what I do at the end of each my mantra, just so that there's conclusion, it just brings you, brings you out, and I know Julie has a, wants to end on that note too, uh, on the translation there. So I didn't have anything else, but I think today was a good meditation Monday. Sorry about last week we weren't able to make it out, but um, maybe we'll do two, two in one week uh, or these weeks with the holidays coming up. Right? Yeah. And I wanted to, to add two things. I'm like walking around the park to, because the, the sun is moving pretty quickly. So um, for those of you guys watching that, might follow a specific religion that is not Hinduism or um, if you're not following any religion at all, just want you guys to know, at least from what I'm learning so far about yoga philosophy, is that you can believe in anything that you choose to. And the practice of meditation and yoga is to really enhance your relationship to whatever spirituality you already have, excuse me, that you already have. And uh, I don't know if it's the same for, for you, Nirav, um, but I thought it was pretty dope learning at least that part so people don't feel worried like it's going to conflict with, with uh, yeah, totally. you know, whatever path they're, they're choosing to follow, you know? For sure, yeah. I mean, that's why I think a lot of things from, from Hinduism are really easy to catch on because you don't necessarily have to, uh, you know, I, I myself, I don't consider myself religious, but I do consider, my, consider myself spiritual because... I don't wake up every day and do the religious things and like offer God, so or, you know, do the whole uh, morning prayers stuff like that. But there, I would say there's a lot of things that the the culture can provide in terms of um, wisdom and and science that's been around for a lot of centuries, and it proven a lot of proven cool things can come out of meditation, yoga, uh, chanting, and things of that sort. So definitely. Google is your friend when it comes to this stuff. So do some research on your own and, and feel free to ask us in the group too. We're a really cool community and I think um, a lot of people have a lot to provide in this in the in the rogue um, yogi run the world group. <laughs> awesome. And uh, yeah. on that note, um, you you guys are gonna get to learn about Hindi words, Sanskrit words and you know part of the Hindi religion. So you get to learn a lot of new things and hope you guys take one thing that, that works for you. Um, just in my journey and my travels, there are, there's like some systems of yoga or any kind of system that says, oh, you should just study one thing and stick to it. And then the other one says, hey, just stick to this one. Don't mix and match. But I just think there's so much to 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 all these pigeons are, you guys got to watch this real quick. Pigeons are flying. They're literally like following people with food and they're flying about. So if you see me reacting, it's because it's because of these cool pigeons. So I want to flip the camera back. The brain part there. But yeah, just, and that's why it's called Rogue Yogis Run the World. It's, it's that you get to... You get to experiment and be introspective and be your best teacher and learn from what we share here and, and see what's going to be the best in helping you live a peaceful life and keep things chill. Really, that's what it's yeah. boiled down to, keep things chill. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep, keep it oh, simple, um, keep it chill. Oh, uh, real quick, um, Nirv, can you can you explain what Om Shanti is? Because I don't want to brush over 
that important point of wanting to start the meditation with that greeting and finishing the meditation yeah. with that greeting. Well, I, I think everyone now knows what OM is, right? Like OM is just a universal sound, right? Whereas Shanti is peace, right? So it's literally calming your mind. Like it's saying, hey, let's clear my mind. OM Shanti. So OM meaning the sound of the universe. OM. So saying that sound and then Shanti, which means peace, peace, peace. Like Shanti repeated three times um, is uh, peace be upon my my, my being, right? So, or peace to, or peace, period. And and that helps you clear your mind, essentially, before and after your, your session. So it's a good opening and closure. Yes, and it's different from what you guys in the Western world might be experiencing in your yoga classes, which is many teachers will <laughs> say namaste, or they'll say namaste, and... Uh, although that is a common greeting used in, in the U.S. and other Western classes, in my experience in India, none of the teachers say namaste at the end of class. They usually say namaskar, namaskar, or they also say om shantihi. And om shantihi right. is uh, the greeting for peace, and namaskar is, is a more formal greeting of uh, hello and, and goodbye. Is that, is that right, Nira? Yeah, 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 you hit on it. Namaskar is definitely more more um, used, I would say, in um, Indian culture. Nam namaste is, it is pronounced namaste, and actually I'm glad you said that, the pronunciation, because pronunciation is, is really important when it comes to Sanskrit mantras, because you don't want to say the wrong thing um, and then maybe pronounce your vibration wrong, right? So uh, there's a lot of cool Google videos and, um, and YouTube videos that you can find these mantras on uh, to make sure you're in a stress in it. But, but yeah, Namaskar for sure, I do a lot. And um, Namaste is sort of, I don't even know where Namaste is, but it's, it's widespread and everywhere now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is very widespread and it, it's kind of a reverse shock to, to not hear it at all in, in uh, the uh, Indian classes. But mm -hmm. uh, and also another thing is uh, yoga is yog, originally known as yog, and asanas are originally known as asans. So if you yeah. hear something like trikonasan, it, that's the original term for triangle pose versus a trikonasana. Right. That, so that I mean, in Indian, in in in, 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 in like Hindi and in Indian culture, but A is usually silent. So like, you know, there's like the, the epic uh, Mahabharata, but it's actually the Mahabharata. Like uh, asana is asana, yeah. We we have that A up after, but it's always silent for whatever reason. I know it's that. All right, cool. So just check in on the time here. Okay, yeah. so yeah, we've uh, we've spent about forty five minutes together. So it's a good time to wrap up the broadcast. So uh, we'll uh, we'll post when we do the next meditation, but we're aiming for next Monday, same bat time, same bat channel. And thank you guys for watching live or watching the replay later. I recommend that you practice this meditation again at least two to three more times. And if you'd really like to build some consistency try for every single day, whether or not you're doing a physical practice on the mat uh, or not, uh, at least every day, try to go for the, the meditative aspect. And uh, Nirav, do you have any, anything you'd like to uh, leave the guests with to wrap up the video? Um, well, not really. I think I mentioned everything I wanted to. Just want to make sure you're all uh, have a, a peaceful week, and uh, hopefully these meditation techniques will, will help you uh, channel your inner focus and, and strive towards your goals in, um, for whatever you're looking for. Oh, very dope. Thanks, Nair, for your time. See you guys all next week. Mm -hmm. All righty. Bye. Bye.